In this tutorial, we will teach you how to use the Blur tool in Adobe Photoshop CS6. The Blur gallery consists of three filters, Field Blur, Iris Blur, and Tilt Shift. In addition, there is a set of separate blur effects that let you create amazing highlights mimicking the circular Bach effect produced by lenses. Here we have an image of a cat sitting on grass. The background of the image does have some blur effects, but we will add some more in the picture. For that, let's get to the filter menu. Drop down to Blur and select Field Blur. Photoshop turns the mode to full screen automatically. Now you can see that your cursor turns into a pin and you have an adjustment ring around it, which placed already on the screen. You can move it wherever you want to apply the blur effect and then increase the blur as per your requirement. You can also enter the blur value on the field blur sidebar. A blur value of zero prevents any blur from taking place. It protects or masks out that area of the image. What we want to do is keep the face of the cat blur free with the rest of the image blurry. If you click on the image, we can get additional pins and then set their blur value. To check how your effect looks, press and hold the M key. The white area shows the blur effect and the black area shows the protected region. Now again, go to the filter menu. This time, drop down to blur and select the iris blur option. This particular blur brings up an eclipse shape blur filter. It has a center point which works just like the one we saw in field blur. The function of the four dots around the adjustment ring is that the blur starts outside the dots. You can move them all together by clicking on any one of them and moving them around. If you want to move one dot specifically, then press and hold the Alt key and drag the dot around. We will move all the dots separately to get the perfect blur around the car. The handles that look like small dots on the ellipse can change the shape of the blur field if you click and drag them. The square on the ellipse changes the corner shape of the ellipse from an oval to a more rounded rectangle. We do not want the rectangle look in this image, so we will use the default shape. In this next image, what we want to do is keep the middle part of the image clear and add blur to the top and the bottom, which is the sky and the water. So select the Tilt Shift Blur by going to the Filter menu, dragging to Blur, and selecting Tilt Shift Blur. It has an adjustment ring placed at the center of the image, with a set of horizontal lines appearing on either side of it. The dash lines create the boundary between completely blurred options of the image and the start of a transition to the protected image area inside the solid lines. All the lines and the pin itself can be moved and tilted any way you want. We want to blur the entire water area. Drag the dash lines to the end of the picture so that we can have an even transitional blur effect. You can increase the blur value if you want, but in this particular picture, the value is just about perfect. The Blur Effects panel present consists of three features, Light Bock, Bock Color, and Light Range. The Light Bock slider controls the intensity of the effect. Higher values will make it more prominent, which is exactly what we want. The Bock Color slider boosts the saturation of the effect, so we will increase that a bit too, while the Light Range slider lets you tone the values that are affected by the Light Bock and the Bock Color effects. By unchecking the checkbox on the right corner of the Blur Effects panel, you can spot the difference between the effects.